1,377 degrees Celsius and extreme radiation. Nevertheless, the Parker Solar Probe has just achieved the impossible. It approached the Sun closer than any other probe before it. This means that we have brand new measurement data from the corona of the Sun for the first time, and we now know what conditions cause a surprisingly hot and dynamic phenomenon there. This record is another milestone in the exploration of our star, and soon the Parker Probe will fly even closer to the Sun. On December 24, 2024, history was made again. For the first time in human history, a probe approached the Sun so closely that it was able to dive directly into the Sun's outer atmosphere, known as the corona. The distance of only about 6.1 million kilometers to the surface of the Sun and the speed of 690,000 kilometers per hour was an absolute record in the history of space travel. Parker Solar Probe is not only the first probe to come this close to the Sun, but also the fastest spacecraft we humans have ever constructed. The flyby in December 2024 was an increase from a previous approach that brought the probe similarly close to the Sun just a month earlier, on November 21, 2024. The extreme speeds at which the probe has to move were made possible by a clever Venus gravity assist maneuver performed in November 2024. This maneuver shrunk the probe's orbit enough to allow it to fly at breakneck speeds, yet safely, through the hot solar corona. The Parker Solar Probe at the Center of the Solar Winds As early as August 2023, this small but revolutionary probe demonstrated what it is capable of. It became the first man-made object to cross the Alphane surface of the Sun. This critical area marks the point at which solar winds overcome the Sun's gravity and escape unhindered into space, eventually affecting the Earth. At a distance of only about 24 million kilometers from the surface of the Sun, the probe's instruments and protective mechanisms were tested under the most extreme conditions. Temperatures in this environment would normally melt any metal or plastic, but the engineers designed the Parker Solar Probe to navigate almost perfectly through the Sun's furnace. To avoid being incinerated, the probe does not remain in the ultra-hot environments of the Sun for long periods. It uses clever gravitational assistance maneuvers at Venus to gradually reduce its orbit towards the Sun. After each flyby through the hot corona, it moves away again to cool down and prepare for the next approach. Each new orbit is another step towards even better exploration of the Sun. Each time the Parker Solar Probe gets closer, the measurements will be more accurate and our understanding of the Sun more comprehensive. Scientists hope to learn more about the processes on the Sun that trigger the infamous solar winds and how the mysteriously high temperatures in the Sun's corona come about, a region millions of degrees hotter than the Sun's surface itself. With each approach, the Parker Solar Probe writes history and provides us with valuable data that helps us better understand our star and its effects on the solar system. It may sound crazy, but the surface of the Sun is cooler than its surroundings. Cool, in this case, means about 5,500 degrees Celsius. However, in the area surrounding the Sun, about 2,000 to 5,000 kilometers above its surface, temperatures can reach 1 to 3 million degrees Celsius. So far, there are various theories as to how this difference comes about. The Sun's magnetic field probably plays a crucial role. Some scientists suspect that magnetic reconnection heats up the corona through the sudden release of energy and the interweaving and breaking of magnetic fields. Others believe that plasma waves, also known as alphane waves, transport energy from the solar surface into the corona, causing extreme heat there. Fighting the heat with unique technology Sending a probe to the sun sounds simple, but in reality, this mission is a masterpiece of NASA. We have been spoiled for decades by extraordinary probe missions within the universe, and it seems almost natural that NASA repeatedly sends probes to provide us with unique images and groundbreaking insights. But each of these probes is a technical and logistical challenge. Developing the measuring instruments and installing them in a housing that can withstand the rough launch and the conditions in space is a feat in itself. Rockets with the thrust of several thousand Porsche engines have to shoot the probes, 
which weigh between 500 and 1,000 kilograms, almost vertically into space. Once they have reached Earth's orbit, the scientific units are decoupled and sent on their way to their respective destinations. For navigation, researchers rely on a combination of automatic and manual control techniques. Particularly sophisticated routes, known as gravity assist maneuvers, use the gravity of planets like a kind of cosmic slingshot to accelerate and keep the probes on course without additional fuel. Every planet and moon presents its own challenges. Planets like Jupiter are extremely difficult to fly to because the immense gravitational pull can put a lot of stress on technical equipment or even destroy it. Mercury, the smallest planet, presents a different challenge. Its proximity to the Sun means that probes are attracted to the Sun's enormous gravity, which requires precise course calculations and controls. When exploring the Sun itself, scientists not only have to take into account the extreme gravitational force, but also the extreme temperatures. Similar problems arise with Venus, which is also considered a glowing furnace. Nevertheless, the Russians built several Venera probes in the 1970s and 80s that could withstand temperatures of over 450 degrees Celsius. NASA took a similar approach when designing the Parker Solar Probe. The construction, protective mechanism, and flight paths are specifically designed to withstand the extreme heat and radiation of the Sun. The probe is about 3 meters high and weighs only 685 kilograms, which makes it surprisingly light for a space probe. The compact design cleverly minimizes the surface area exposed to the sun's deadly radiation, while at the same time optimizing the stability of the housing. A flame-retardant carbon composite material with a foam core is used as a heat shield. This thermal protection system is about 11.4 centimeters thick and is sufficient to withstand temperatures of up to 1,377 degrees Celsius. On the side facing the sun, the probe is extra thickly padded, while the sensitive instruments remain on the shady side. There, the engineers manage the feat of keeping the sensitive sensors and the camera cooled to about 30 degrees Celsius. The carbon shield reflects most of the sun's energy and also withstands the bombardment of high-energy particles from solar storms and cosmic radiation. Shields made of robust materials, such as aluminum, provide further stability. The protective shield is designed so that it always faces the sun, regardless of the flight attitude. The most sensitive devices are well protected in a tightly shielded housing and special coolants and heat exchangers regulate the temperature at a constant 30 degrees Celsius. The question arises as to how this probe regulates its energy supply. So close to the sun, the probe could use the extreme energy conditions outside to generate its own power. The only problem is that solar cells would also burn immediately if they were to face the sun directly. To solve this problem, the researchers placed the probe's solar cells so that they would capture enough light to meet the probe's power needs while still being safe from overheating. NASA engineers used a special water circulation system for cooling. The panels are designed so that only a small portion of the surface is directly exposed to the sun, while the rest remains folded up. Cutting Edge Technology Fields, Whisper, Sweep, and ISOIS now let's take a look at the probe's most exciting instruments. Parker Solar Probe is equipped with four main instruments. One of the most exciting ones is FIELDS, a high-precision magnetometer and electric field sensor. This device measures the electromagnetic fields in the solar corona and investigates the complex interactions between the charged particles of the solar wind and the sun's magnetic fields. It helps to understand the physical processes that create and drive solar winds. Another highlight is WHISPER, a wide-angle camera system that delivers impressive images of the solar corona and can also depict plasma flows. This instrument provides unique images of solar winds and coronal mass ejections. With these images, scientists can observe the formation of the particle streams directly in the corona for the first time. The Solar Wind Electron's Alphas and Protons Sweep instrument is a highly sensitive particle sensor that analyzes the composition and movement of the solar wind. Sweep is able to precisely detect even the smallest particle streams of protons, electrons, and helium nuclei. 
The newly acquired information is crucial to understanding how these particles are accelerated and move through the solar system. With the ISOIS, Integrated Science Investigation of the Sun, NASA measures high-energy particles released during solar flares or coronal mass ejections. This instrument precisely tracks the directions of the currents and can thus calculate their points of origin on the solar surface. These insights will enable scientists to gain a much better understanding of the processes that accelerate particles to extreme speeds and blow towards us as solar storms. Solar winds are actually quite normal, but extreme ejections can endanger our terrestrial infrastructure. The particles have the potential to paralyze our power supply and destroy communication systems. This danger from the sun was one of the reasons why NASA built a solar probe. We need to know more about the processes involved in order to protect our terrestrial power and energy supply systems. Six years on the way to the sun, the launch of the Parker Solar Probe on August 12, 2018 was an event. Aboard a mighty Delta IV heavy rocket, the probe took off almost vertically into the sky. After the successful launch, the Parker Solar Probe separated from the rocket and began its journey of more than six years. On its way, the probe passed through the inner solar system and used the gravity of Venus to accelerate and gradually reduce its orbit. These gravitational assists brought the probe ever closer to the Sun. In doing so, it was necessary to maintain a balance between proximity and distance. The Sun attracts everything that approaches it due to its enormous gravity. Nevertheless, objects usually don't burn up in the Sun. Kept at the enormous speed of their original orbit, objects attracted by the Sun usually fly by. We can observe this phenomenon in dozens of comets and asteroids. Nevertheless, the probe should not just fly past the Sun, but should approach it regularly and then swing back into a further orbit. Planning the route was a feat of skill. Scientists rock and stabilize the probe between the gravity of Venus and the Sun. With every flyby, the planet's gravity slows the probe down a little, causing it to follow its elliptical orbit closer to the Sun. Like every probe mission, the Parker probe was a nail-biter. Many mishaps can occur along the way, so missions like this one always remain exciting. Subscribe to the channel now and be there for every new video.